while acknowledging that the Finance Bill 2024 protests were hijacked by criminal elements, it is important to refocus our minds and efforts on the social contract we signed with the people of Kenya when we promised to deliver on better and improved service delivery across all sectors and regions of our beloved country. This joint NDIC comes at a defining moment in the history of our country. For the first time, our young people, or the so-called millennials and Gen Zs, have exercised their constitutional right to canvass our parliament to reject the Finance Bill 2024, demanding better governance and service delivery to the people. They have called us out with a particularly strong message to the government that they are not feeling us. In some instances, we gave them the ammunition to fight back by showing off our opulence, maybe corruption, and wasteful use of public resources. Essentially, they are pointing out how insensitive we are to the impact of our decisions on the well-being of our people in the face of difficulties arising from domestic and external shocks. They want to see a more inclusive government that is sensitive to the emerging issues affecting them and majority of Kenyans, including the high cost of living and lack of employment opportunities. In response to this unprecedented uprising, His Excellency the President, Dr. William Ruto, has led from the front by conceding our failures as leaders. He declined to consent to the Finance Bill 2024 and returned it to the National Assembly for Amendment. The import of this is that the budget of 2024-25 has a gap of 346 billion that will make it difficult for the government to realize its commitments for the bottom-up economic transformation agenda programs. This is a major challenge that also presents an opportunity for us to look at ourselves in the mirror to evaluate whether we have lived up to the expectations of our citizens. We need to assess whether we have supported the president to improve the governance of our country and deliver on his promises of social and economic transformation, or the decisions we have made and our lifestyle are being seen as impediments to equitable growth and prosperity for all Kenyans. We must work together to build better relations between parliament, constitutional commissions, county governments, and above all, with the people of Kenya. The events of the past two weeks have taught us important lessons. We must listen more, communicate better, better, and support his Excellency the President to deliver on his promises to the people. This, ladies and gentlemen, should be our mantra going forward. We must all strive to win the hearts and trust of the people in the remaining period by rolling up our sleeves and going back to work for them. The moment is here for us to deliver the envisaged benefits of the better pillars of the people. We have an opportunity to move up our agricultural value chains, expand the Hustler Fund to support the growth of our micro, small and medium enterprises, scale up the uptake of affordable housing, expand access to health care to achieve universal health coverage for all, and integrate our youth in the digital superhighway and creative economy space. It is time for us to cut our cloth according to our size. 
through prudent utilization of the available resources and targeted investments in areas of the better programs that realize the best results to the target beneficiaries. Each and every shilling counts in this new journey. Accounting officers at all MDAs should be more zealous in protecting resources allocated to them. Um, so let me begin by, by requesting that we all be upstanding to observe a minute silence in honor of all those who lost their lives during the past two weeks through the demonstrations. Thank you. you. can be seated. May the Almighty God rest their souls in eternal peace and comfort their families. Thank you. So, Cabinet Secretaries, Principal Secretaries, ladies and gentlemen, accountability remains a cornerstone of our mandate. As public servants, we are trustees on behalf of the people of Kenya, and we remain accountable to the people of Kenya. Our actions and decisions must always reflect this responsibility. We've been having a lot of challenges in even processing um, requests like travel, also tracking presidential directives. But uh, my office, in collaboration with ICT, uh, we have come with uh, integrated information system that going on, going forward, I think from 1st August, we shall go paperless. When you want to travel abroad, you will just log in, upload your application, and the process will go through until it reaches the president so that we avoid a lot of paperwork and also delays on shoveling papers from one office to another one. In respect to the foreign travel systems, all senior ranks within the executive, from cabinet secretary to chief executive officers of state corporations, will now be making their travel clearances applications through the online portal and the end-to-end -end processing of the same, including transmission of travel clearance approvals, will be executed through the online platform. We have also come up with an initiative called Zero Fault Audit Campaign, which we are working closely with Auditor General and the uh, Internal Auditor General, the Minister of uh, Treasury, to ensure that all the transactions that we carry out in our state departments and ministries have no qualification at all. And we are saying this because we are the ones who generate uh, requests, we are the ones who process, and we see no reason as to why we always get audit queries from Auditor General whenever she comes around every year. We want to have zero fault. It has to be zero. And if it is difficult to explain each and every process, then we must flag out and state clearly that this is not possible because of either there is a legislation or there is a statute that has to be amended, there is a process that has to be done, or it needs a referendum to sort out the problem that raises the audit query every time. These are the issues that we, we are trying to deploy uh, to ensure efficiency and effectiveness in running government affairs. So the zero fault audit campaign uh, shall be presented later this morning remains a key catalyst towards realization of the better, uh, better ideals. Indeed, consistent audit queries and failure to address issues flagged out by the Office of the Auditor General in the audit reports 